Hi everyone, my name is Olga Cardamon and I'm the founder and CEO of Eagle Travel Tours to Russia. Uh, I have already made two different videos about Catherine the Great. One was about how she got the throne and the other one was about uh, the things that she achieved during her rule and what her typical working day looked like. But of course, uh, one of the biggest things that most people are interested about when talking about Catherine the Great were her relationships. And this video is going to be about that because I think it's absolutely okay to be interested in personal life of historic characters and especially Catherine the Great because uh, she is such a great example um, of a strong woman who was a great politician but, you know, also wanted to be happy in her personal life. Anyway, and you know what? She was uh, really <laughs> good with uh, her favorites. You know, she always treats them well. Yes, she had a lot of them, but, um, you know, she always gave them different gifts. Uh, she always helped them achieve a lot in their career. And even when those favorites uh, would leave her for some reason. For example, maybe they would fall in love with somebody else or maybe Catherine the Great would fall in love with somebody else. You know, she would always uh, break up with them really smoothly and set them up for a future life. Um, you know, she often gave them gifts and uh, her favorite gift to give uh, was actually snuff boxes. Uh, you can see a picture of um, the diamond room in the Hermitage and you can see this showcase here that has uh, a collection of snuff boxes that belong to Catherine the Great. Uh, a lot of them are made of real gold and decorated with diamonds and you know they would be really expensive. Historians say that Catherine the Great had those snuff boxes basically placed all over uh, whichever palace she was staying at. Especially they were occupying the bookshelves and the windowsills. And if she felt like awarding someone real quick, she would just grab a snuff box from the windowsill and give it to that person. So yes, she was a really, really generous woman. And since we're talking about parting ways with some of uh, her favorites, you might remember uh, Grigory Arlov who helped Catherine the Great get to the throne early in her uh, career as a Russian empress. But eventually they did fall out of love and uh, parted ways. So after Grigory Orlov, uh, the next man who Catherine the Great was in love with, his name was also Grigory, Grigory Potemkin. And um, their relationship lasted a long time and was amazing. Of course, I'm going to read from my favorite book about the Romanovs here. So here we have it. This would be the great love affair and the supreme political partnership of her life. Potemkin and Catherine were opposites in terms of their style of living. She was orderly, Germanic, measured and cool. Potemkin was wild, disorganized, Slavic, emotional, and larger than life, Panache personified. She was 10 years older, born royal. He was the son of minor Smolensk gentry, brought up spoiled among five sisters. In religion, she was a rationalist, almost an atheist, while he combined orthodox mysticism with a rare enlightened tolerance. He was a wit. She liked to laugh. He sang and wrote music. She was tone deaf but loved to listen. He was nocturnal. She went to bed at 11 every night. She was practical in foreign policy. He was imaginative and visionary. While she was always in love with one person, he was a voracious and animalistic enthusiast who could not stop seducing and making love to the most beautiful aristocratic women and European adventuresses of his time as well as to at least three of his gorgeous nieces. Yet they shared many passions. Both were sexual creatures, earthy and unshockable. They adored literature, neoclassicist architecture and English gardens. Potemkin traveled with a garden, born by serfs, that was planted wherever he stopped for the night. Both were obsessional collectors of art and jewels, and both relished splendor. 
though his tastes were sultanic, if not paranoic. But above all, they lived for power. And yes, Catherine the Great did promote uh, Potemkin and gave him a lot of military ranks. And <clears throat> at some point, he was even a field marshal. Anyway, this was a great love that lasted for many years. And some historians believe that Catherine the Great and Grigory Potemkin were actually secretly married. And even years later, when they all had relationships of their own, you know, uh, as I read, Potemkin had relationships with his young nieces, Catherine the Great managed to find young lovers, but the idea was that they um, still kept paying respect to Catherine and Potemkin. So, for example, if Catherine had young lovers, they were calling her and her husband Matushka and Batushka, mom and dad, basically, and they had to pay respect to him too. And yes, after Potemkin, she did have um, several really young lovers. Uh, for example, Pyotr Zawadowski or Simon Zorich, who actually had to uh, stop his relationship with Catherine the Great because he challenged Potemkin to a duel. And Alexander Lanskoy, who was 21 when Catherine the Great was 31. Uh, but um, one young lover of Catherine the Great's who really stands out uh, because of a really crazy story, uh, his name was Platon Zubov. And actually, Catherine the Great was in love not just with him, but with his younger brother as well. So Platon Zubov was 22 and his younger brother was 18. They both really wanted to earn... Um, Catherine the Great's favor, and they were both fighting for it. And just to eliminate his brother, Platon Zubov uh, sent his little brother away to join the army. And even though he did gain Catherine the Great's favor, it seems like really soon he got tired of it. And um, he fell in love with another woman. And that woman <laughs> uh, was the wife of Catherine the Great's grandson, Alexander. So when they got married, they hit it off at first and they spent a lot of time together. But eventually, Alexander uh, would have to spend a lot of time away from her. He was training to be a future emperor. He was studying a lot. He was spending time with his family. And his wife, wife Elisabetta, uh, eventually got a little bored. Anyway, she was lonely and she was walking around the parks a lot. And Platon Zubov, he fell in love with her and he started pursuing her. However, that was not received well. Elizaveta herself did not like it. And then, of course, when Catherine the Great and her grandson Alexander found out about it, they were not okay with it either. Anyway, Alexander and his wife Elizaveta by that time were actually kind of cold with each other already. But this whole situation with Platon Zubov actually helped them grow closer together. And almost they were almost back in love now anyway so Platon Zubov was kind of the last uh, man that Catherine the Great had a relationship with <laughs> what a long list I hope you enjoyed this video and um, if you have any questions about Catherine the Great her love life or anything else please feel free to leave your questions in the comment section I would love to answer them I hope you enjoyed this video Feel free to subscribe to my channel and have a great rest of your week. Bye!